Hey guys, Harris here, and this is the LG G6. You've probably heard of it, you've probably seen it online, you've probably seen it in commercials, uh, and you've probably seen it in major retail centers, but you probably haven't seen it on the streets, at least not many times. And that's because it's being dwarfed by the Galaxy S8 in all of its marketing dollars, all of its grandeur, its curves, and it's just its general appeal to the market. That's a shame because the G6 is a phone that's worth your money as much as probably any other phone on the market. So after a month of using this, let's go ahead and take a look to see if this phone is worth your money, which I think it is. Let's go ahead and take a look starting with my favorite things about the device. So what's awesome about this is that even though the design is overshadowed by the S8, it's still the most striking thing, the most apparent thing when you first look at it. And that's one thing that's gonna be drawing a lot of eyes to the LG G6. It embodies the future of smartphones. It is the future of smartphones and design language. This is what we're about to get used to. And that's really what LG has been all about all these years. Remember back to the LG G2? Yeah, that thing had almost no bezels and it was known for that. The G3, no bezels. The G4, a little bit more bezels. The G5, the same thing. And now with the G6, it's returning to its roots, getting rid of that bezels. This is the future of phone design language, and I'm completely okay with that. Less bezel, more screen. More immersion, less distraction. Same size body, greater screen real estate. And the build is boxy, rugged, and concise. Far from as flashy as the S8, but it's a bit more of a utilitarian design. Ever so slightly tapered corners and a conventional candy bar feel in the hands, rather than the S8's melted candy bar look. I really dig it and it gives you something to hold on to when you're using this phone. And an added perk, this color does a really good job at hiding fingerprints. It's not invisible and it's not uh, totally fingerprint proof, but it's a lot better than a lot of the metallic phones out there. And while this phone feels like 100% metal, the back is actually Gorilla Glass. Uh, but basically it looks like metal and it feels like metal, but it is glass on the back. Now, of course, this phone does have water resistance as well. That's something that's become almost ubiquitous in smartphones these days. And above all else, it's a feeling of security. Even if you're not going swimming with this, uh, for me, example, the other day a friend spilled water on this. It took me a couple minutes to even clean it up because it just didn't really matter. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, you're not going to break your phone by getting it wet, and that's a great sense of security when you're paying 700 800 whatever $100 for your smartphone. Water resistance is great. And then the camera on the back. I'm looking especially at you, Mr. Wide Angle. Now while the iPhone 7 Plus has the optical zoom as well as digital zoom, and I'm not gonna lie, that is pretty awesome paired with the portrait mode, the G6 relies on, like the G5, the standard lens, a 71 degree 13 megapixel f1.8 lens, and then a super wide 125 degree f2.4 lens that all but guarantees to make every picture look a little bit more dramatic and often more awesome. Now, the second camera, the wide angle one, is pretty awesome, and it doesn't have autofocus because you're not really supposed to be close up on anything. That's where a lot of distortion comes in, but for wide angle shots and when the uh, subject is farther away, it becomes really handy when you're out and about and you just need to fit more in this shot. The wide angle lens on the LG G6 is awesome and takes a different approach to something like the iPhone 7 Plus, like we just mentioned, whereas one is optical and digital zoom. Uh, this one is wide angle and regular angle, which can have a similar effect to optical and digital zoom since the standard lens will be a lot more cropped in. And of course the standard has autofocus which works very well. Uh, and then the front facing camera is five megapixels and it works pretty well, no problems there. Now sadly, if you wanna fill up the entire viewfinder with your image when you're taking pictures, uh, the highest resolution is 8.7 megapixels. But if you wanna utilize all 13 megapixels when shooting on this camera, you're gonna to have to shoot in four by three, uh, which looks like this, uh, rather than 18 by nine, which is maxes out at 8.7 megapixels. Uh, which is obviously just how resolution works, but it would have been really cool if you could have gotten all 13 megapixels with this full 18 by 9 viewfinder, but you can't do that. Other features that we've learned we can't take for granted would include a headphone jack, which this does have, and a properly placed, easy to access fingerprint scanner, which is on the upper middle of the phone. It's a circle, it also doubles as the power button, is easy to press, easy to find, and no problems. It doesn't double as uh, any type of touch gestures like the Google Pixel does, for instance, which I would have liked to have seen, that would have been cool, but it's a fast fingerprint scanner uh, and it is easy to find. 
And then there's expandable storage in the SIM tray up to 256 gigabytes, which is pretty standard, but also pretty nice. Another awesome thing is USB Type-C, which is becoming increasingly common in smartphones. It's an extremely versatile port, completely reversible. Uh, the price of cables are going down. It can power accessories such as USB, uh, HDMI, SD, really anything you can throw at it, this will be able to handle with the USB Type-C port. So that's great to see, and I'll leave some of these accessories linked down below. So now what's decent about the phone? So the battery and software both take that title for me. The battery is okay, it'll get me through a day most of the time, but not really anything into the second day. Getting around four hours of screen on time with pretty conservative brightness. Uh, wireless charging and fast charging do help to alleviate these issues, but in general the battery is rather mediocre, nothing special. Now the software is okay. It is running Nougat, which is nice to see, and it does have some elements to it that are pretty close to stock, such as the quick toggles. And it's got other really cool features, such as not code, which is a really sleek way to unlock your phone. It's got um, always on display on the lock screen. Uh, you can customize the shortcut buttons on the bottom. You can double press each volume button to get to respective actions, which is nice and convenient. And then there's double tap to wake the screen, as well as double tap to sleep. Uh, and overall, it's a decent skin. It's not anything fantastic. The settings menu isn't anything special. And I replaced it with Nova Launcher on the first day, which is the beauty of Android. So it gets a thumbs up for me, but not two thumbs up, nothing. I would go out and buy this phone just for that. But the software doesn't hold it back too much. The one big downside of the device is the speaker. It's neither loud nor good sounding, and it only comes from the bottom, creating a pretty terrible experience. You have such a big, beautiful screen, 5.7 inches, but when you have this terrible speaker, I would stick to headphones with this phone. You're really not going to be impressed at all. Okay, so the G6 is a rock-solid phone, literally, in the sense of the build. It's really stellar, really high quality, and you're definitely going to appreciate it. And there's also two great cameras on the back that provide a lot of functionality, work really well, and produce some really good images and video. You have a decent skin on top of Nougat, nothing special but nothing terrible. You have water resistance and expandable storage, and then you have pretty decent performance even on the Snapdragon 821, which is slightly behind some of the other devices. It's pretty fast and pretty good in daily experience. Now it's not going to be as fast or smooth as a Google Pixel, and it's also not as flashy and feature-packed as the Galaxy S8. But coming in at a hair cheaper than the S8, and perhaps a little bit better screen, uh, as well as water resistance that it has over the Google Pixel and very similar build quality. I would say definitely a mix between the Pixel and the S8. The only thing really holding it back is its speaker. Now, battery life could be improved as well, um, and a closer to stock Android experience would be great. A little bit of tweaking of software to get the performance and battery life better would be much appreciated, but really it's just that speaker holding it back, uh, as well as a couple other small things. But this is a phone that is worth your money as much as just about any other phone on the market, and you should definitely consider it. Thank you for watching this review. If you enjoyed it at all, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I put a lot of work into this one. been working on it for about two weeks in a row now. Um, and let me know what your thoughts about this phone are. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.